Here I go again, instead of giving you a quick way of detecting zero log on, looks like I'm trying to help show you how I deal with uh, getting rid of false positive, but that, that's also a valid lesson. So a viewer of the channel, his name is Gideon Balchassen, uh, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing his last name correctly. Uh, he pointed out that in his system, even with those uh, test conditions, let's actually review them quickly. Uh, these were the original one, then we put the, when the password is last set, and then we put, well, if the host name is the name of the controller, even with those con these four conditions, he was still getting false positives. And what he also noticed is that, let's actually go to the event, he noticed that the, what denotes that this is uh, a real thing is when the account name has the name of the actual domain controller. If the domain controller is doing this for another account, that's fine. That's a false positive and the rule should not fire. So what we need to do is add a test condition that when the account name is the name of my domain controller and I have only one, in your case, you may want to put any off, uh, put them there or put them in a reference set. But I'm going to show you just uh, what I, I do in mine. Now, how do I extract that property? Well, that's uh, an easy thing. Notice that in my events, I have not only that one, but several others. And I didn't have to deal with the regex. You see here, if we do target computer name, that would be the property that we need to use, right? How do I did that? And I should have done this. It was actually Chris Ross, the one that pointed this out. That Jose, why do you need to be doing regex and stuff like that? They are, IBM did those for you. And if I go to the app exchange and download, which I already did this custom properties for Windows, you get that right there. You don't need to do anything else other than not all the custom properties that you bring into the system are indexed for performance reasons, but you need to actually uh, index this one, which I already did, but I just want to show you how you will do it in your system. So if we go here and put target computer name and search, there are three here, which is the one you want this one, account change, right? So you need to go here and check this one, which I already did, this check mark for index. And this tells you that to use it in rules, this thing is to be enabled. Once you've done that, we can go back to our rule and add that test condition. Very similar to the, all the other ones, event matches. This search filter, we click here plus, we have it underneath here. But I did it too quickly, so let me do it slower. When I click in this search filter, you put here target computer name, and here it is because we check on that thing, equals any of, that's good. And then we paste the name of my domain controller. I click plus, I click add, I click submit, and now we have that condition added. I click finished. I'm actually gonna close this offense and I'm going to uh, do the attack again and see what do we get. And here we have it. Our offense has fired with that extra condition. I hope that this puts this behind, but I think it might be a good, for those of you who have done are doing this for the first time, it's a good way of what we have learned here. Well, first of all, go to the Apex chain, Jose, before you start messing around with anything, because IBM may have done that for you. And I will do a video this week on the use case manager and, and neat way that it has to help you look for content on rules and stuff like that. And um, second, well, you, you need to have the actual test environment, which I did not have. And then how you be adding the different test conditions uh, for, for checking this out. Thank you very, mo very much, uh, Gideon, for uh, allowing me to, to see this and to Chris Ross for pointing out that uh, that these custom properties were already created for me.